This is the third video dedicated to the Gilbreth Principle and finding surprise values for Gilbreth performances. So today we're looking at cyclic structures having cycle length 13. So over here in our Desmos activity, let's just do a quick review. Given a standard deck of 52 cards, we will analyze packets of size 13N that consists of N cards of each of the 13 card values, ace through king. Consequently, the permissible values of N are 2, 3, and 4. Also, please note that the actual suits of the cards will be unimportant to the coming analysis. To facilitate graphing in Desmos, the variable x will be used in place of n. In other words, the functional variable x that we will use represents the number of cards of each of the 13 card values, ace through king in a packet consisting of an equal number of cards of each card value. This means that the packet size for a given value of x is 13x. Since we are modeling possible scenarios for a deck of 52 cards, the permissible values of x are 2, 3, and 4. Therefore, when interpreting the various graphs, we need to mentally multiply the value of each x-coordinate by 13 to obtain the actual size of the packet of cards being represented. Although each of the following functions only makes sense for discrete values of x, namely 2, 3, and 4, Desmos uses a generalized factorial function the gamma function, to draw a continuous graph that connects the corresponding discrete points in the plane. So let's go ahead and take a look at how the surprisal functions are built. And we'll go ahead and focus on the top one first. The core expression for our surprisal function can be constructed in the following way. Since we're looking at cyclic structures having cycle length 13, we will have an equal number of aces, twos, threes, all the way up to kings. Let that equal number be represented by the variable x. Hence, we will have a total of 13 x cards. Now, the total number of v, in other words, value packets, these will be packet structures that cycle through all 13 card values in some consistent fashion, is the following. It's 13 factorial multiplied by the quantity x factorial raised to the 13th power, where x can take on the values 2, 3, and 4. In other words, this is the number of ways that the 13 times x cards could be randomized and found to have a cyclic structure relative to the 13 card values. Okay, So there's many ways of doing that, but there are far more permutations of these cards, and as we'll see, that is an enormous value. Now, to obtain the probability of achieving such a packet structure that cycles through the card values, we will need to divide these two quantities. Therefore, given the above 13x cards, the probability that a random mixing of these cards would yield a packet that cycles through the card values in some consistent ordering is the following. 13 factorial multiplied by the quantity x factorial raised to the 13th divided by the total number of orderings of those 13x cards, which is the quantity 13x factorial. Consequently, the surprisal of such a packet occurring by chance alone is log base 2 of 1 over the probability here which equals log base 2 of 
this quantity reciprocated, which is what we have right here. So this will give us the surprisal associated with randomly shuffling the 13x cards and find that they perfectly cycle through all 13 card values in a consistent way. So that is how our first surprisal function was built over here on our Desmos activity. And to the right, we can see the graph. Now, technically, the only real points on this graph are the blue dots. The connecting lines is simply the gamma function turning this into a continuous line of points. But the only three points that make sense in this context are the ones that are plotted. Okay, so this is a cyclic structure with cycle length 13. So as built right here, the surprisal value of this particular structure is off the charts, as you might imagine. It is 133 bits of surprisal, okay? This surprisal value is similar to the surprisal value associated with being struck by lightning seven times throughout your life. That's how likely it is that we would randomize a deck of cards and find that it has a structure similar to the one here, where it cycles through all 13 card values perfectly, okay? Not very likely. But as we've learned in these videos dedicated to the Gilbreth principle, this is not really the punchline for that kind of routine. We always need a cyclic packet for a Gilbreth performance. The magic now occurs when we deal out a random number of these cards as well or as badly as we like or as we can, okay? And then the structure remaining will still have a significant surprisal value, okay? In fact, we can look ahead to see what it will be. It's over here. It's the second surprisal function, one right here. So G is for Gilbreth, and V is for a packet that perfectly cycles through all 13 values. So once we Gilbreth shuffle the deck that I've set up here, the nature of the resulting structure will have a surprisal value of 35 bits, okay? So let's go ahead and just do a Gilbreth shuffle and then show you that, in fact, we get structured, guaranteed by the Gilbreth principle. Okay, the Gilbreth shuffle always begins with dealing out any number of cards. This can be dictated by the spectator. The spectator can tell you when to stop dealing. It really is a free choice. When they say stop, go ahead and stop dealing. And then we'll have two portions of the deck. At this point, we just need to riffle shuffle these together. So we can do it in a traditional way, or we can actually just do a rosette shuffle. It really is your choice. Which would you like? Rosette shuffle? It's kind of prettier. Okay, so let's just spin these really, really well. Just bring these together. And now they're going to interlace however they may. Okay, we're not in any way controlling this, as you can tell. It's making quite a mess. Okay, so there is no way on this green earth anyone could have controlled how those cards were interlaced. Now, despite that mixing, there is tremendous structure that is preserved by that shuffle. And so that's what we're going to look at here now. So if you take a look at the second surprisal function, which is the green one here, this is the surprisal function for the Gilbreth shuffle version of the deck organization that we started with. And in fact, the surprisal value for the structure that I'm going to reveal in just a moment, it's 35 bits of surprisal. So what I'm going to show you now, after having mixed this in the way that you just witnessed, the surprisal associated with the structure that I'll reveal is the same level of surprise one would experience in taking 35 fair coins, tossing them high up into the air, and while in the air, calling for all of them to land heads up and 
they do. Every single one of those 35 coins amazingly land heads up. Okay, and you predicted it ahead of time. So the level of surprise associated with that random event is the same as the level of surprise associated with what I'm going to show you now. So after that Gilbreth shuffle, in which the spectator decided how many cards were dealt out, and then we did this very messy rosette shuffle. We could have done a riffle shuffle as well, but we did a rosette shuffle in which no one was controlling how those cards were being interlaced. Let's take a look at the structure of this deck now, okay? So this is good. This has, quote, 35 bits of surprisal associated with it, okay? The structure that we're going to see right now, okay? So what is the structure the deck has after that shuffle? Well, it has the following structure. Every set of 13 cards, starting from the top of the deck, consists of exactly one card of each of the 13 card values. So let's just check that. So here we have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. Here's 13. The 13 top cards are right here. Is it true that there's exactly one of each of the 13 card values. Well, let's check. I see an ace hiding here. Ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, jack, queen, king. We have exactly one of each card value in the top 13. Well, we're not done because the next group of 13 also has that characteristic. So let's just take a look. We have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 13 cards right there. Going off the screen, apologize for that. Okay. Um, in fact, let me just, I'll just slide them over here and then I'll fan them out so you can see them. I think this is the next set of 13 cards from the top. Do you see one of each card value? Well, I believe we do. Ace, two, three, four, five. Where's the six? Oh, sorry. Left them on the table. <laughs> we must have had just 12 cards in my hand. And you can check that. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Jack, queen, king. Check that out. The second set of 13 cards consists of exactly one of each of the 13 card values, okay? Well, let's quickly check the rest here. The deck is getting to be a bit smaller, so maybe we can actually check it more easily here. So we have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. I think that's, whoops, I think that's 13 cards there, though I don't know how to count. It looks like the two is needed. Uh, apologize for that. There we go. Okay, let's, so let's check it. Ace, two, three. Oh, we need the four as well. I'm sorry about that. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, thirteen. Okay, very good. <laughs> I finally got 13 cards. Ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, jack, queen, king. There you go. The next set of 13 has exactly one of each card value. And that leaves us with the bottom 13 cards. Ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, jack, queen, king. Every set of 13 cards beginning at the top of the deck consisted of exactly one of each of the 13 card values. The surprisal associated with doing that is the same level of surprise as we saw over here. It's 35 bits. It's the same level of surprise as one would experience in watching 
35 fair coins being tossed high up into the air and while in the air an individual calls all of them will land heads up and then you watch the coins fall to the table and bounce around and eventually settle down and every one of the 35 coins is heads up and it was predicted ahead of time okay so the level of surprise for this Gilbreth performance that I've just shown you is the same as the level of surprise of that 35 coin toss, okay? Now we do have a second interpretation as you probably know if you've watched videos in this series. Another fun interpretation that we've given elsewhere is that 35 bits of surprisal is the same level of surprise one would experience in answering 35 true-false questions by randomly guessing, but nonetheless scoring 100% on the quiz. So it's like getting a perfect score on a 35-question true-false quiz where you've randomly guessed on each and every question. Or another interpretation would be that you've just won the largest lottery in human history, which is what 35 bits of surprisal would represent. And of course, I also have this difference function, which simply shows the difference in surprisal between the original cyclic packet having cycle length 13 and the Gilbreth shuffled packet. So thank you for watching and watch for the next video in this series where we will come up with a general formula in which you can choose any cycle length you like for a Gilbreth performance based on that packet structure. So thank you for watching and take a look at other videos on the Hidden Structures channel and also take a look at the Desmos activity link provided in the description below. So thank you again.